Thank you for joining us here at SSC Live TV. Dr. Chen Jobst will be discussing how your dietary habits can assist you in your spiritual goals. Welcome to Taste and See. Hello once again and welcome to Taste and See on SSC Live TV. This is Elisa Lee Jobst. And this is the Reverend Dr. Ken Jobst. And we're here today to, uh, to share a little, some things that we've learned since last we got together. And I, I, you know what? It's going to be all about Abraham Kuyper, Abraham Kuyper, the theologian. Not Abraham Kuyper, the astronomist, right? because we don't want people to get the idea this is about the Kuiper belt that's out there on the other side of Neptune with all the little planets. Oh, heavens no. No, th this is about theology. Th this is about something about God. And so what I want us to do is, it, here's what it's called. It's called Abraham Kuiper's theory of sphere sovereignty. Sounds complicated. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Abraham Kuiper was a, um, I don't know if he was Norwegian or Swedish, let's just call him Scandinavian, right? He was a Scandinavian theologian. And here's what he said. He said, when you read the first chapter of Genesis, what you find are a series of spheres. And I said, spheres? Like round? Circle things? Orbs? Hmm. And he said, no, no. He means like spheres like areas of influence. And, and so watch this. I'm going to pick up a few verses from Genesis chapter 1, the very first chapter in the entire Bible. And, and watch. Genesis chapter 1, verse 12 says, The land produces, produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds, here's the phrase, according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Now, Kuiper said, you have to watch where God is saying, according to their kind. In Genesis 1.21, we read, so God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird, according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. All right, now, now we continue. This is verse 24. We're in the same chapter. This is all about creation. And God said, let the land produce living creatures, according to their kinds, and livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals each, according to its kind. And it was so. And then watch the very next verse. God made the wild animals according to their kinds and livestock according to their kinds and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Very good. 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 <laughs> it was good. It, it was good. Now, nine times in these few verses, we get this phrase according to their kind, kind mm -hmm. or according to their, their kind. kind. You know what Abraham Kuyper said? What did Abraham Kuyper say? He said, I think we're on to something here. Except he said it in like Norwegian, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he said, here's what he said. He said, look, God created everything and God created within creation particular spheres of interaction according to their kind, right? So here's what Kuyper says. He says that each sphere fulfills a distinct creative purpose of God. Let me say that again. That each of the spheres they create, and this may not be an exhaustive list, there may be other spheres, but they each fulfill a creational purpose of God. Watch, right? You've got the sphere of work. Okay. You've got the sphere of family. You've got the sphere of like politics and art 
and, and, and sport and science, all these different spheres. Reminds me of like the Ed Sullivan show. Juggle. Where juggle. All those spheres, right? Now, here's, here's the thing. Kuiper said that in each of these spheres, some way or another, there are interactions that take place and there's some sort of authority that's exercised. Now, you know, and by the way, Kuiper is saying the animals, the birds, the fish, all that stuff, that gives us the pattern, but we see it in human interaction at work, at play, you know, in the home, in the economy, in politics, that they are all spheres. Now, but he says this, Sounds like he said a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kuiper says, be careful to keep your spheres straight and don't try to impose the ethics, the attitudes, the, uh, the ways of doing business in one sphere upon another sphere. Because you know what Kuiper said about families, right? He said, look, families aren't businesses. Governments aren't churches. Hospitals aren't sports teams. So he said, be very, very careful with the way you use language and metaphors and, you know, ways of expressing because you don't want to get your spheres crossed. Because if you emphasize one sphere beyond its proportion, you're probably ignoring another sphere of creation. And remember, at the bedrock of what Kuiper is saying is that, hey, God made it this way because God wanted there to be multiple spheres. Now, here's, here's a little more. Um, sometimes we like to say that our workplace is like a family. And, and that, that may be nice and that may be a, a good sentiment. And other times we might want to say, well, be, be careful unless the workplace becomes your church. You don't want to worship your work, work at your worship, play at your worship, all those things, right? Uh -huh. So <laughs> that was really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the bottom line deal is Kuiper is saying, don't put the values of one sphere inappropriately on top of another sphere. So success in a family may or may not look like success in a business, right? Success in a church may or may not look like political success. But we live in a day, time, and era in which it seems as though all of those threads get interwoven like a scheme of yarn the cat's been playing with. That's fun to untangle. <laughs> okay, so, so that's Kuiper. Right, that's Abraham Kuyper, Scandinavian theologian, and all around uh, conversation starter kind of guy. Now, <laughs> now I, I, I gotta tell you, I don't buy all of his theology, so don't go digging through Wikipedia and finding some obscure Abraham Kuyper quote to come at me with. But, but the, the bottom line of it is, it gives us reason to pause and think, wait a minute, this according to their kinds thing makes some sense because in the theory or excuse me the principle of sowing and reaping you sow later excuse me you reap later than you sow you reap more than you sow but you reap of the same kind that you sowed hmm. if you sow tomato seeds you don't hmm. reap cucumbers true so so all of this all of this is Hugely important for what we're going to talk about today on Taste and See. Go ahead, Elisa, ask me what we're going to talk about on Taste and See. What are we going to talk about today, Pastor Ken, on Taste and See? We're going to talk about sphere sovereignty and food. Let's get to the food part. Okay. <laughs> She's been waiting very patiently. All right, today, today is a special treat because we're talking about one of my favorite things in the entire world. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from years gone by, everybody who knows me knows I'm a Trurophile. He likes cheese. Exactly. 
that 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 means truophile means you are a lover. He, she said I like cheese. Oh, I'm sorry. He loves cheese. Truophile a means a ton of different kinds of cheese. Cheese lover. Mm. And I'm a cheese lover. And today we're going to talk about a cheese that I think should be more well known than it really is, but it's got some inherent. Perception issues, mm -hmm. because it seems not to want to stay in one sphere. That's very true. It wants it's in one sphere and it wants desperately to be in a different sphere. It tastes like a different sphere from cheese. And it, it it's like when you hold a kitten who wants to go somewhere else mm -hmm. and it claws to try to be able to get wherever it's going. That's this one. That's this cheese that we're going to be talking about today. It's a cheese from Norway, and it, it's, <laughs> I always have to, uh, excuse me while I read the name of the cheese. It's Get Toast. That's G-J-E-T-O-S-T. Get Toast. G-J. Mm -hmm. Just the other day I was saying. God bless you. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So Get Toast, Get Toast is this cheese right here. And I'm going to bring it right out front for us to, to consider. Don't adjust your set. Because, yes, indeed, this Get Toast cheese is, um, it doesn't look like cheese that you're going to see around every day. It's not like a, a pale cream color like mozzarella. It's or not, orange. It's not it, a... It's not orange like a cheddar that has the, uh, the, the little... Anatin, what is it? The, the, the little additive that makes it yellow. Yellow mm. stuff in it. Yellow stuff. Mm, technical term. This, this, as you will see, is a very pleasing color. And I'm going to ask Elisa to describe the color for us. It's not just brown. It's, t what, tell me what does that color remind you of? It looks like caramel. It looks like caramel. It's a caramel colored cheese. But well, what does it taste like? Now, okay. We're here, now, here's the thing. I got a caramel colored Get Toast cheese right here. By the way, it comes in these little half pound, actually 8.8 .8 ounce packages. And up until six months ago, it was marketed as Get Toast. I mean, that, that's, it just said Get Toast cheese. And it, it's made in Norway in the Gudbrandstalen region. Good Bronstalen. Valley. Valley. <laughs> so tell all your Norwegian friends that, that you, you swung by to buy some Get Toast cheese. And, and watch, today, six months, you know, six months later from the first time I noticed this, they sell it in America under the brand name of Ski Queen. Well, there's something Americans can pronounce. Right. In, instead of get toast, ski queen. Now, here's here's the deal. 150 years ago in the Gudbardenstaden region valley of, of Norway, there was a woman who was making cheese. She was making sheep's milk cheese and cow milk cheese. And in the process of cheese, you separate, what is it? The curds and the whey. That's my little... Miss Muffet cheese lesson, right there. Right. So you separate Without the curds. Without spiders. So, so the, the curds are the solid part. The whey is the liquid part, right? So, so what, what this woman did was that she poured the cream into the whey. I'm sorry. The whey. whey. <laughs> and, and, and made the cheese in the whey. And, and she got out of the whey. Huh. The cheese that got out of the way, right? So, so what happened was it, it got all of the um, you know, lactose sugar, milk sugar, gets into the cheese, and it's cooked. And by golly, what do you suppose this caramel-looking cheese tastes like? Well, we're going to find out.
okay? No, I don't know. I don't know if this is a, uh, you know, you decide. I had a crazy thought experiment. This is one of these thoughts I have late at night when you're wondering, why aren't you asleep? Yet. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, right? Here's my crazy, crazy thought experiment. Could a Nazarite drink grape knee-high soda? Are there grapes in grape knee-high soda? By golly, what do you suppose this caramel looking cheese taste like? Well, we're going to find out, right? So, so here we go. It, it does have a caramel color. Let's, um, let's work on this a little bit right here and cutting it. Ooh. It has a caramel texture. It has a very smooth texture. So, and I, I'm just slicing through it. It, I don't know if you, can you slice through caramel? Not really, because it's too sticky. Yeah, well, this is, it's a little mildly on the sticky side, but we, we cut off a couple slices there. Um, and you know what, let's do, let's taste it and yeah. see. Oh, for taste and see. Okay. Okay. That's exactly what we're going Perfect. to do. Perfect. I would like to uh, encourage you to try one of these. Well, you know what? Should we try it on the cracker first or just try it by itself first? Let's try it by itself first. I touched okay. that one. Okay. I'll be careful. My wife touching. The, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. Do, do, here. I'll take the bottom part of this. Okay. Just grab onto that and I'll take the other half. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. It tastes like candy. It's sweet. Totally sweet. Oh my goodness, it's so good but creamy. And <laughs> mm. I've, I've allowed this to come to room temperature. Wow. In previous tastings, I, I had it cold. And at the end of the flavor, there's, there's like a salty... Tastes like cheese now. Yes. Right, so the cheese kind of sneaks up at the end of it. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're trying this and it's not at room temperature, you won't get much of a cheese taste at all. But it will taste like just like candy. It's very sweet in the beginning. Tastes like candy. Now, I've always been, you know, I, I've always had this concern, and the, the the concern was this: what if one day people in Washington, D.C. make a law that there's no more candy. They, they say, look, you can, either way, this can go either way. You decide there's going to be a law where there's no more candy or the law is going to be there's no more cheese. Which would you pick? And, and that, oh, mercy. If you had to go through life with no more candy, Mm -mm -mm. Wait a minute. What, what if you had to go through life with no more cheese? And, well, I'm thankful that we don't have to contemplate such things here in America, right? However, however, what we have here is Abraham Kuyper's big question. Which is it? To which sphere does it owe its allegiance? Is it a candy that tastes like a cheese? Or is it a cheese that tastes like a candy? She's thinking it over. I'm trying to see what the first ingredient is. The, the, the first ingredient is cow's milk. The second ingredient is sheep's milk. Now, what do you look for in a candy? Sweet. Sweet? Do you eat candy on something else or do you eat it by itself? Usually by itself. So, so candy, it's sweet, you eat it by itself, right? Now, cheese should taste... Not sweet. Cheesy. Che <laughs> and not sweet. Right? Cheese, cheese should have kind of some sort of a, a, a dairy-related flavor. It's odd to think of it as being a sweet thing because we, we tend, you know, feta, that's not sweet. Mm. Whew, mercy. Um, 
So some of the, the milder cheeses, farmer type cheeses, soft white cheeses have scarcely a flavor at all. But we come upon this get toast and it tastes like caramel. It does. But it's a cheese. So if Abraham Kuyper came in to your home and asked for a cheese sandwich, would you feel comfortable giving him cheese that might not be according to its kind? It's he'd, he'd have to wander off in a quandary. <laughs> now, what we have here, and I'm, I'm going to have a little bit more. There's, there's a little, I don't want it to go to waste, right? It's the, very good. It says you can serve it suggestions on apple pie. Oh, Murphy. What'd you get? Apple pie at, in caramel sauce on ice cream waffles and pancakes and served sliced on bread waffles 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 and pancakes you put cheese on a waffle they suggest that where are you i thought i knew you i wouldn't okay although now no what we have maybe is a peanut butter <laughs> about sphere sovereignty right we're talking about sphere sovereignty and we're talking about the boundaries are we talking about a cheese sphere and a candy sphere or could there be something else we've got the crackers we've got the cheese but i want to propose to you i've already done that once before <laughs> i said yes <laughs> I, I would like to propose to you that there's another way to settle this dilemma and and the way it's going to be settled is it candy or is it cheese is to find the link between the two. We need a sound effect that goes ba wow. Right? You got it, perfect. Okay, it's the link between the two. And here's the link. You alluded to it in the apple pie comment. An apple. Now, we've got crackers over here, the very fancy schmancy and all that. But you know what I'm gonna do? Just for the purposes of today, I'm going to slice this apple the wrong way. Huh. And slicing this apple the wrong way, I'm going to expose to the world a Kuiper paradox. He's and so whoever else is watching. But first I'm going to cut out the little the little middle right there where the stem goes. It's gone, right? Now I'm just going to cut this is our cooking. We are cutting. So, so now, now I'm going to cut this right in two, just like that, because my bride wants some over here. Now I continue with, now w watch, watch. I heard you say that cheese can go on top of apple pie. It's not something that I hear much in this area, but back east, friends, it's a thing. Now. So I'm going to use my trans Kuiperian imagination. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> Save your watch. Um, now, if I had caramel, what would I do with it? Put it on an apple and eat it. I would dip the apple in the caramel and eat it. Okay. If I had cheese, what would I do with it? Pop it in your mouth and eat it. I'd just eat it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, give this a try. Let's see, and I'm gonna, I'll cut these one more time so we've got more manageable portion control. My dear. Thank you, darling. Here we go. This is for science. I guess for theology. Cheers. Okay. All of it or just half? It, however you like. Now, here, here we go. Here it comes, Abraham Kuyper. Mm. Not as sweet as it is by itself. Oh, wow. Yum. Right there. Mm hmm Not at first. It's not yum at first. It's kind of odd. 
You have to wait for that one. That's the best thing in the world. I, I'm do, okay. See my hands? Mm -hmm. Hands down. Oh. That's the best thing in the world. Don't worry about a law against candy. Don't worry about a law against cheese. Get the candy, get the cheese, put it on the apple, get the get toast, get toast cheese, and it is just an absolute delight. Any other deep philosophical quandaries that we should be uh, solving here? Not with just the cheese. Can I ask a question? Can I ask you a question, like seriously, serious as can be? Certainly. Would you make a grilled cheese sandwich out of that when we get home? No. No? Let me rephrase that. Will you make me a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> Do you want one? <laughs> if you want one, I'll make that for you. But it seems wrong. It, 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 it does seem, it would be like. And if, it, if we did that, it would have to be maybe on Hawaiian bread that's sweeter. Oh, look at your face. He wants that. I may have to do that. Watch this. So, <laughs> seriously, um, what if there was, and maybe you don't have to use all that cheese in the grilled cheese, mm -hmm. but what if you made a grilled cheese sandwich with the right bread, and it might have to be a baguette, Okay. or toasted get toast on a baguette, with Nutella. Oh, that would be evil. <laughs> Yum. Would that make it, would that tip it over the edge? Yeah, that's most definitely dessert. That would be a dessert. That would not be, so, so a grilled cheese though, it's not the mm. kind of thing you'd sit down with a, a, a bowl of tomato soup. No. And, okay. No, All right. that's too Get sweet. toast. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's good. I, I, hope, I hope others can still find it because I think I bought out all of it at Kroger. Uh, but it comes in that little happy ski queen type of uh, type of packaging. Well, I think we've solved that for the time being. Any anything else that we need to do? Oh, wait a minute! One more thing. Yes, sir. What would you make go in a fondue with that? Fruit, definitely. Nuts would be really good with that. Nuts in the fondue. If you can. Pecans. Pecans would be good. Cashews would be Cashews good. Cashews would be good. <laughs> <laughs> you ask me. I. Later today, we're going to go home and make fondue out of this thing. <laughs> and, and we're going to explore the possibilities. But you know what? It has been a delight. We've, we've learned a little bit about Spear's sovereignty. And for my money, the Get Toast is absolutely queen of all cheeses and queen of all candies. It's Let's made by Ski Queen. That's right. where the queen thing. Ski Queen. That's right. That's where, the, <laughs> that's where the queen comes in. Well, once again, a anything else you'd like to say? We, we're I'm good. All right. Well, we're going to head on out of here and go grill some cheese and, and have a, a, a great evening around a crackling fire with, with our trusty dog, Shadow, lying at our feet. So... For Taste and See, this is Elisa Lee Jobst with Dr. Ken Jobst. It has been a delight to be with you. Hey, tune in again and, and watch all the shows on SSC Live TV. It's TV our way. Until next time, we'll see you right here at Taste and See. Bye-bye. Bye, friends.